What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Just a Guy on My Lunch Break, where I talk about mostly Kratom, a little bit about life, and a fair amount about just random shit. That's what I do. And the good thing about the name of the channel is, if folks don't like it, I'm just like, Just the guy on my lunch break, bro. What, like, what do you want from me? <laughs> you know, um, you know, if you're looking for, you know, sound, cutting edge medical advice or scientific advice, then you don't, you don't go to a guy's channel that's called Just the Guy on His Lunch Break. I, I mean, you know. Joke's not on me, it's on you. Like, what are you expecting? <laughs> uh, one of the reasons I, you know, settled on that name, I was like, you know what? The internet tends to have some pretty lofty expectations of the kind of content that sh people should be discussing when they subscribe to a certain channel, you know? And, of course, I say in my description that I talk a lot about Kratom use, but I also say, you know, that I just talk about life in general and that I'm a motivator and I motivate people to exercise. You can look at a lot of my shorts and you can know that uh, just living life to the best that you can possibly live it, whatever that life is and means to you, that's what I'm all about, you know? And I like to motivate people to become the best versions of themselves how kratom interacts with that relationship or how how kratom's relationship interacts with you living your best life well that's gonna vary from person to person right i mean my wife takes probably three kratom per day first thing in the morning and then she doesn't take it anymore for the rest of the day she's never developed an addiction never developed uh, a physical dependence maybe i should say that she just hasn't developed a physical dependence she might be addicted i mean she likes to take it every day but a gram and a half first thing in the morning and then she doesn't touch it for the rest of the day so and then you have somebody like me who took 20 grams of kratom yesterday and i still had a little trouble sleeping last night right and i've had people to come onto the channel and tell me they were taking 900 capsules per week plenty of people tell me that they were taking in excess of 70 100 grams per day you know so you really just like anything else you really get a full massive spectrum of the kind of people uh the kind of kratom users to be quite honest and, uh, you know, so when, when you think about the stark differences in the amounts that people take, how long they've been taking it, what the dosage and usage is per day, per week, when you start breaking all that down and you notice what a wide range and wide variety of different users you have, it makes sense that not one size fits all, right? And that's kind of where this channel comes in. Um, and I'm very open about that. And I'm very open about, I'm not on here to tell anyone to do anything. This is not a one size fits all. You know, if, if my shoe is on your foot, then it's definitely going to fit and vice versa. No. No. <laughs> it might. It might. But if I take the shoe off of my foot and put it on your foot, you also might walk around for 10 minutes and notice that you got this huge ass blister on your heel and you're like, damn, well, this shoe ain't gonna work for me. It's the same thing with Kratom use, you know? So it's not a one size fits all thing. And um, that's why this channel is just kind of an open platform where people can come on and, and you know, a lot of it is just the empowerment of knowing that there are other people out here going through the same thing you are going through. You know, um, a lot of it is that, you know, 
a lot of it is well I can share my story I can get those feelings off my chest and then I've had it said a million times on this channel wow I feel so much better just typing this out just just, just typing out this comment and just kind of telling my story and putting it out there damn that's therapeutic you know I, I feel better like, like wow you know you know weight lifted you know just brush that off you know and it's and it really is one of those things i mean why do you think therapists tell people to write in diaries you know why do you get and you write your feelings out why do you do that because there's more room on the outside than there is on the inside very simple concept and a lot of us really take that for granted likewise this channel has been therapeutic for me you know to get out there and just be completely open about my struggles uh, with Kratom. Um, not just Kratom, but just drugs in general. Substances in general throughout the years. A lot of people get funny when you call Kratom a drug, but uh, it obviously acts like one. It's not classified as one. It's actually classified as a food. But come on, bro. Come on, bro. You know, we... <laughs> uh, maybe pharmacologically... Uh, pharmacolog pharmacologically? Damn, I'm probably making that harder than it has to be. Pharmacological. Pharmacologically. I think it's pharmacologically. Pharmacology. No, pharmacologically. Hell if I know. I don't know. As far as it's, uh, pharmacological, is that right? Hell, I don't know. I, I don't know. The way it's made up is actually a food. It's actually classified as a food, but its effects are something completely different. You all know that, or you wouldn't be on this channel. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's that right there, what just happened in the last 30 seconds, that's part of that rambling part of just a guy on my lunch break. And hey, I'm just a guy on my lunch break. Bro, what do you expect? You know, um, well thought out. You know, well formulated discussions, almost in presentation type form, where I'm going to hit this point, talk a little bit about that, then I'm going to hit this next point, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Nah, bro. Nah. Wherever this brain takes the conversation, that's kind of where I go. And, you know, I do um, print out people's comments and stuff like that, in which I'm getting ready to go over some, but. Um, that's just an outline. That's just an outline. As I go, as the discussion starts to take shape, um, I'll read things, I'll notice things that just in that very moment, like, oh yeah, and this, and I'll just talk about it, and then, you know, it just, uh, it can take on a completely different direction, but, um, it's an open forum for me, it's an open forum for you guys, free for all, for everybody. The only thing I ask is that people don't get on here and hate or troll or throw salt at other people and I think I've done a pretty good job of keeping the community clean of that and there have been a few times where I've had some haters pop on some trolls pop on and uh, a lot of people get after me because I, I take my time to put those trolls in place and I'll make a whole video freaking roasting their asses but you know what I don't regret it I don't regret it because you know, I think that, uh, I think it's been made pretty well known that, hey, we're here to support each other. And everyone that's on this channel is here to support each other. You don't do that by discouraging other people. You do that by encouraging other people. So if you're not going to be part of the solution, you're part of the problem. And if you're part of the problem, you got to go. Don't let the door hit you on the, in the ass on the way out. All right, on the ass, on the way out. Um, so yeah, like I said, I'm going to tell a little bit, elaborate a little bit on where I'm at. So I took right around 20 grams yesterday, and to be honest, it was not great. Um, you know, again, I'm off of, coming right off of the holidays where I was home for a whole week and a half. Um, a lot of people say that, you know, when they're home and they're not working and stuff, they actually can do better at cutting down their dosage and not taking as much. For me, I find it's the opposite. 
Um, if, if I'm home and you know I don't have a lot of structure going on, um, I want to be in a good mood for my family. I want to be up for my family, have you know kids, including a little baby now. So uh, you know I have a hard time lessening the amount that I'm taking when I'm at home and I don't have any structure. That becomes more difficult for me because I kind of like, you know, if I'll get bored, you know, and then I'll want to dose just because I'm bored and I don't have anything else to do. Um, and I'm trying to keep my mood elevated. And uh, so, you know, when I was home over Christmas holiday for 11, 12 days, I kind of just took willy nilly as much as I wanted to, wanted to take. So during those times, um, you know, and, and about a week, in mid-December, uh, I went for about a week, a lot of you guys probably remember this, I went for about a week and I got back onto capsules as opposed to the powder and I was starting to cut down again and I actually got to where I was taking right around 15, 16 grams per day, some of that at night. Uh, that's one of the ways that I've really started to curtail my use because one of the biggest deals for me guys is I have an infant in the room with me at night. And for any of you out there, a lot of you, you know, some of you guys, a lot of you I know are my age. Um, some of you not quite as old as me, but most of you are old enough to, you know, be parents. Uh, and a lot of you are, I know, and I've had those discussions with a lot of you. And uh, you know as well as I do when it comes to being a parent and if you've raised an infant, you're on their freaking schedule. All right? That infant doesn't give a hot damn how much sleep you're getting. They don't give a hot damn if you are not getting any sleep and then you've got to get up and still do stuff around the house, still go to work, earn money, then come home, try to do something for yourself, exercise, then turn right around and start taking care of them again. They don't give a hot damn, you know? Uh, babies come into this world completely egocentric, and it's fine. It's, it's supposed to be that way. And it's been that way since the beginning of times. So I'm not complaining. Um, you know, I'm not, I mean, he, my son's seven and a half months old. So it's not like I can be like, you spoiled little bastard. You know, think about somebody else for a change. <laughs> He's not even self-aware yet, you know, so that's just, you know, that's, that's just a completely pointless way of thinking. Um, but point still remains when he wakes up and he wants something to eat in the middle of the night, you know, and granted my wife actually does most of the feedings. Uh, so I really appreciate that about her, but it still wakes me up, you know, and I still come and watch him and try to console him and stuff while she's making his bottle and all that stuff. And the boy has got some lungs, I'm telling you now, and he's not at the age yet where he can understand she's getting it. She's working on it. You know, she'll run out of the room into the kitchen. She's making the bottle. And he goes from 20 miles per hour to 30, then to 50, then to 70, then about, and and after 45 seconds to a minute from the very moment he opens his mouth to start fussing, after about 60 seconds, he is full on, yeah, where you can see his tonsils doing this right here, yeah as he's crying and screaming you know he he doesn't understand yet he 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 doesn't conceptualize um the thought of they're working on it it's coming i'm not going to starve you know i don't have to do all this screaming and crying i've let them know they're working on it when she gets it ready she's going to come and she's going to put the bottle in my mouth no he doesn't none of that shit matters you know his whole thing is i'm hungry I'm crying until the bottle gets in his mouth. And it's literally one of those things where he's like, like, this is the nipple, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then he's done completely. Uh, he stops. No more crying, right? So uh, anyway, you can't, you know, you can't rationalize with an infant, obviously. So no matter how well I'm sleeping or not sleeping, he still needs what he needs, Right, and it's gonna be that way. He's gonna be the center uh, for a while, you know, until he gets to the age where he can actually understand, you know, maybe it's when he's eating solid food, whatever, and he starts sleeping all the way through the night. Right now, he's not doing that. So my point being, 
I've started learning that I need to save uh, a pretty significant amount, like a lion's share of Kratom for my night times, even while I'm tapering, right? And the reason I need to do that is because it allows me to, uh, it allows me to sleep through the night. I need all of the sleep I can get. And I noticed, you know, last night throughout the night, I didn't take but maybe three Kratom capsules um, throughout the whole night. You know, if I, I took my evening dose when I got home somewhere about around 5.45, 6 o'clock, something like that. And then I don't really take another lion's share dose for the whole rest of the night until the morning. Um, but recently, since I've been starting to taper, I've learned that I need to cut a, cut out a little bit during the day and then save some of that, whatever my total amount is going to be for the day, if it's 20 grams, I need to save a good portion of that 20 grams in capsule form so that I can take a few at night uh, because I'm having trouble sleeping through the night. Last night, same thing. The last time uh, you know, my son woke us up, it was probably 4 in the morning, and from 4 to about 6.30 in the morning when my alarm went off, I was just kind of like, do 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 And I was laying there with my eyes closed, but I was not sleeping. And uh, it absolutely was just the fact that I hadn't had my big, large dose since, until, you know, it had been 6 o'clock that evening, you know. So by the time 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning, 4 in the morning rolls around, it's been 8 hours nine hours, 10 hours since I've had my last dose of Kratom, right? So at that point, it's starting to filter its way and make its way out of my system. And I am starting to experience a little bit of the withdrawal. So said all that to say this, I'm not going to go so hard in the paint that I can't get the sleep that I need at night. And that is one thing that I admittedly, I am a go hard or go home thousand percent or no percent type of person i'm the type of guy that you come to the gym to work out with me and i see you not giving it your best i'll get pissed off at you i'm that dude um i'm not sure if that was a good example but i think it is um and and that carries over into something like if i decide i want to make some sort of change with my kratom use i'm like go hard or go home and i always end up going a little too aggressive and I don't need to do that. Uh, I don't need to do that. I need to, you know, I've got a lot going on in my life, a lot going on in my job. Um, you know, I have a job that requires a, a lot of responsibility. I have a lot of responsibility at home uh, with my family. And uh, I just need to be on my P's and Q's, you know. So that's one thing I preach to you guys on here. Do a slow taper. Slow taper. Find out what's comfortable or where that edge is, you know, the least amount that you can take where you're not going into full-on acute withdrawals where you have restless leg syndrome at night, right? And um, and again, I'm coming off of the holidays, starting January 1st, I'm like, oh, I want to taper, but I'm starting a little bit too aggressive, and I realized that yesterday. So I took right around probably 20 grams, um, but only a couple of grams of that did I save throughout the night. So tonight... I'm going to take whatever I need to take to go ahead and sleep through the night, right? And once I get comfortable and I'm sleeping all the way through the night and I'm not noticing any withdrawals, that's when I'm going to punch the clock and say, okay, now, starting now, I'm going to taper, right? Uh, right now, I'm still trying to find, like, kind of where I'm at and what I'm comfortable with. Does that make sense? Um, so anyway, hopefully that story, hearing that story kind of helps you guys to understand a little bit more about how you need to go about it as well. Uh, I know a lot of people out there just like me, you know, you, you want to go and you want it to happen like yesterday, but um, a slow taper is one of those things where you will get frustrated and you will just go back on it and, and start upping your doses again if you're not careful about how you go about it. You know, Rome was not built in a day. It's not a hundred yard dash. It is a marathon, right? And you really do have to look at it that way. Um, at Austin Nettlebeak, 4876 says, just updating again to stay accountable. Excellent job, Austin. I love the idea of being in this process with others. 
Likewise. Likewise. Uh, it gives me a lot of strength reading your guys' comments. No lie. Uh, started at 30 grams daily. I'm doing 16 grams again today. Day 5 of my taper. I read knocking off 30 to 50% of your top dose is doable pretty quickly for most people. For me, this has been true so far. Planning to cut down one gram every two days. If it gets too hard, I'll stay at that dose for four days and let the body adjust, but never up my dose. Looking to get down to about five grams per day before jumping off. Planning about one week off of work once I jump. That's smart. Uh, unfortunately, I only get two weeks of vacation, so I'm probably not going to be able to do that, to be honest. Um, but uh, no, if you work the time the kind of job or career where you have the ability to, you know what, let me use some of my, I'm just going to use a week of my vacation and kind of help myself get through the worst acute part of it. Um, I say it's a good move, uh, a very smart move if you're able to do that. Thanks again, Corey. Even just writing this out again is good reinforcement, and I sincerely wish everyone going through this now strength and good fortune. Thank you again, Austin. I really appreciate the support, brother, and encouragement. And hey, we are all on here pulling for you. You know what? I just realized it's not Austin. Austin? Bro, I'm so sorry. I, I guess I just assumed Austin. My last name is actually Austin. A-U-S-T-I-N. And I just, I looked so quickly that I guess my mind's eye just wanted there to be an S right there because I'm so used to seeing an S right there. Alton, Altonet? I don't know, bro. I'm probably jacking your name all up. When you leave another comment, let me know what your actual name is. Because you're engaging a lot with the channel. I don't want to call you the wrong thing. Is it Alton? Is it Altonet? El Beak? It's all one, one word together, so it's kind of hard to tell. But anyway, pulling for you. And uh, thank you very much for the comment. At Dennis, C-Z-A-H-L-A. -A -A. Zala? I guess that's how you say that. I'm going to call you Dennis, bro. Starting my taper tomorrow. I'm scared to do it, but it's time, man. Thanks for all of your videos. Keep going. Dennis, thank you very much. Hey, let us know how we can help you. Let us know how we can support you. Use the channel as your accountability mirror. Check in every day or at the least every couple of days and say hey this is where i'm at i just dropped another you know gram or half gram i stayed on the same amount for four days now i'm on this amount this is how i feel you know and what that is is those are teachable moments for other people who are reading through the comments and and looking to make certain changes themselves right um because i'm not the only one facilitating uh facilitating the change and the, the teachable moments on here is you guys and I, I've said many times that I learned a lot from you guys as well so um, yeah keep checking in brother uh, at Shay.Shay83 7 a.m. here in Texas on the 4th of January starting the day with powder pushing as long as I can until I take another extract in the last week I got back up to three or four a day checking in for accountability that's what you got to do. That's what you got to do, Shay. And just keep doing it. Um, yeah, and that's what you have to do. And one little tip for that. Think of it as, oh, no, I have to go a whole day. <sighs> Try not to think of it as the whole day. But let's say it's 8 in the morning. Try to think of it as, I just got to go to 9 o'clock. Just got to go get to 9 o'clock. Then when you get to 9 o'clock, Say the same thing about 10 o'clock. All right, it's 10 o'clock. Now I just got to make it to 11. Go put your hands in something. Go engage in something that's going to kind of take your mind off of it for a little bit. Now I only have to go to 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock, I can make it. I can make it. Once you get to 11, tell yourself 12. And just keep putting off the hours like that. And uh, it really does kind of make it easier. It makes it seem not quite so daunting you know, whereas if you look at it as, oh, I got to go full 12 hours or 24 hours or whatever it is, think of it as from hour to hour, minute to minute. You know, if it's 9 o'clock, just make it at 9.30. Make it to 9.30. Once 9.30 gets there, 10 o'clock, 
Come on, that's only 30 minutes. You can do that. And just, you know, keep stacking it that way. A uh, little tip for you. Um, but yeah, try to put off the extract as long as you can. Um, you know, allow yourself to get to feel a little bit of the discomfort. Try to allow that. Um, because when that happens, I know it's not a good feeling, but when that happens and you recognize that feeling of like low energy or uh, a little bit of the anhedonia or a couple of times I've gotten like the um, kind of the cold chill, almost cold sweaty sort of feeling a couple of times. And that's a feel feeling that's very familiar to me um, as far as withdrawal goes. So when you feel that, it might suck, but that also lets you know that you're moving in the right direction. If you don't ever get that feeling, you're not really tapering, to be completely honest with you. The idea in a slow taper is to where you don't get the the you don't get the withdrawal feelings that are so bad that you just can't function from day to day. You don't want that, right? But you want to have a little bit because that lets you know you're moving in the right direction. At Tyler Logan, 4,900. Withdrawal isn't the problem. It seems to be functioning without the extra pep from Kratom that seems to be my problem. Calm Magnesium is awesome for taking a good dump. Ha ha. I agree with you, brother. You gotta be careful. There uh, were a couple of times uh, when I came off of Kratom this past time last year or a few months back, there were a couple of times where I took a little bit too much of the calm, and uh, phew, taking a good dump was an understatement. It will straight lose stool diarrhea, almost like I was sick. So you do have to be a little careful with the calm magnesium, but it can be very beneficial because Kratom, especially the powder, is known to constipate you. Uh, so if you're having problems with that, definitely a good healthy dose of the magnesium can help uh, draw water into your intestine to kind of help, you know, soften up that poop some, okay? Um, you sound like a cool parent. I came down with the flu uh, yesterday, so I cut down my Kratom one-third the amount I was taking. I'm literally only at four grams tops, but it's easier to do it at home than when I'm at work, when I'm in work mode or dad mode. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's Again, that's different for different people. I find it a little harder to do it at home, to be honest. Um, people are just built in different ways. But hey, Tyler, thanks for the comment, brother. At James.WC5YP, I took a 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C every three hours for two days, and it seemed to help. Um, I do believe James is off of it altogether, I think, completely off of Kratom. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong on that. Um, but yeah, that's a lot of people swear by it. Um, you know, it's not gonna, it's not something that's gonna completely take away your withdrawals. You know, don't get me wrong. I don't, I don't want to give off that impression to anyone. Um, because we talk about paying the piper on here, you're gonna have to pay the piper, you know, and even if you take something like Suboxone or something that is gonna completely negate the withdrawals, that still keeps you dependent upon some sort of opiate. So then when you go to come off of the Suboxone, you have withdrawals from that, right? The only difference is with the Suboxone, you're not really getting the high. So you're kind of getting your body used to not necessarily feeling the high that an opiate gets you, um, which, you know, I guess I can see that there would be a benefit in that, but you're still going to have to contend with the withdrawals even if you come off of something like a medication-assisted uh, withdrawal like with a suboxone right um but a lot of people swear by vitamin c if you take a large amount of it like that that it really can help with the withdrawals uh dennis says i got those kratom wobbles i get shaky and almost tunnel vision this is the first person i've ever heard get the same thing i know i take entirely way too much i finish a kilo of green main dye powder in seven days wow yes uh, before I went on this taper, I was taking about a quarter of a kilo, which is 250 milligrams. I, that was lasting me, uh, for about seven days. And, uh, that was a pretty high amount for me. So yeah, brother, you're, yeah, you've worked your way up there pretty good, man. Um, you know, like I said, 
There's different levels to this shit. There's people out there just taking a few grams a day and they think that's high. But then there's people, you know, Dennis, Dennis says, what, 20 tablespoons a day and I'm quitting tomorrow. I'm nervous because I can't taper down because I don't have the money to buy anymore. So these withdrawals are going to suck. Don't want to do it, but I have to. It's time. Thanks for the videos, brother. Keep going. Dennis, thank you very much, bro. Um, hey, we're pulling for you, thinking about you. Do all of the things you talked about, we've talked about on this channel. The vitamin C, the magnesium can help. Melatonin at night. Um, what I can recommend to you that might help a little bit is instead of, you, it sounds like you're going to do a cold turkey. That's fine. I'm not completely against cold turkey. Sometimes that's just what people have to do. I've done it. I've done it from Percocets in my 20s, and I didn't sleep for over two weeks. It was a fucking nightmare. Uh, I've also done it from the MIT extracts about a year ago. So I have done, you know, a few cold turkeys in my life. It is doable. Um, you know, I know with stronger things like heroin and stuff like that, according to medical professionals, it can potentially be dangerous. I don't know. Kratom is a partial, a partial agonist, so I don't know if it's necessarily dangerous uh, to do that with Kratom. I don't think it is, and I've done it and been fine. I've done it for Percocets and been fine. Uh, it sucked really bad, uh, especially the Percocets, but, um, you know, I, I wasn't, I didn't find myself in any danger because of it. So uh, I would say just, you know, check on yourself every day and keep yourself in check and notice how you're feeling um, but I, if you're thinking about doing a cold turkey, let me say, try this. I know you're tapped out as far as money, whatever. Come completely off of it. Do the, just let the withdrawals be as horrible as they need to be during the day, but then just take it at night. Just take it at night so you can get yourself some sleep by God, because that's one of the worst withdrawal symptoms is the lack of sleep. And I hope, I hope this doesn't cut me off. I'm getting pretty on up there to 32 minutes. So I'm going to try to be quick. But with that way, uh, you can cut yourself down immediately to if, say if you take 8 to 10 grams at night. Bro, that's, you were taking 20 tablespoons a day. I mean, I don't know how much. That's got to be, that's got to be 70 to 100 grams per day. If you're taking that kind of amount and then you go down to 8 grams, 10 grams per day, that's got to be a hundred times better than what you were doing, you know, and that will get you that much closer to just being completely off. And you may not be able to afford the kilo a week habit. I get that. But uh, eight to 10 grams per day, you know, that's going to last you a while. So you're also going to be saving yourself a pretty significant amount of money if you went down like that. And you wouldn't have to deal with the horrible, like, nighttime insomnia restless leg shit that is such a nightmare for people um unfed dead unfed undead excuse me returning to your channel after not watching for a while i see you're also tapering i myself am on a six month taper started december the 10th and expect to be done with kratom for good in june i wrote down all the size of my doses for about three weeks before i started the taper counted how many doses and how many doses and averaged out how much on average I was taking. Then I shaved about half a gram off of that and allowed myself three times daily at that dose, which was 10 grams per dose. Since I've been taking for about seven years now, I was at one point taking more than 60 grams per day. So this is a good place to start. Anyway, every two weeks, I lower my dose to point, by 0.8 grams for each of the three doses each day until I'm at virtually nothing. I myself won't jump until I'm at least, until at least less than a gram per dose. Yeah, I think that's a good move. Um, that's kind of what I did too. I went from a half gram, which is one capsule, to jumping. I didn't jump from three grams, five grams, like a lot of people say, because I, you know, I was experiencing some pretty significant withdrawals with that. All right, guys, I got to go. Love you very much. Hopefully, hopefully you're getting something out of these videos. If you are, please hit the subscribe button, like the video as well, and uh, leave a comment on it. You know, you'd be surprised what you say in these comments, how that can help other people. Just like you're helped by hearing me and then by reading other people's comments, right?
We're all in this shit together. I love you guys. I gotta go. See you next time. Peace.